Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, my brothers and sisters. The Lord. Could we all stand in the name of Jesus? Praise the Lord. So in uh, John 15, 16, it says, You have not chosen me. I have chosen you. Chosen and appointed to bear much fruit. And whatever you ask in the Father's name, I will do it. Appointed not just to be called Christians, do it. Appointed not just to be called Christians. Appointed to be sons and daughters of the heavenly King. Appointed to accept inner circle as close friends. And in Matthew 18, the Lord says, Where two or three are gathered in my name, and if you agree on something, there I will be in your midst. My brothers and sisters, there is more than two and three of us here. There is a multitude of us. So today, let's agree as sons and daughters that wherever the Lord's name is, there will be hearts that are transformed, broken hearts that are mended. Let's believe that this, this is just not a building, but this is the throne room of the Lord himself. So today, as we agree, let's all agree that this is the presence of the Lord. It is he who is orchestrating things. And we will praise his name because there are mighty things going to happen tonight. Mighty things going to happen this evening because we are the sons and daughters appointed. So let's raise our hands. Let's raise our hands in agreement to Hallelujah. this. Let's praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glorify you. We want your power, Lord. We want your presence. We want your love, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We welcome you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. Stop the Lord, oh, lift it up, our God, 
Sing it out. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Lift your hands. Sing it out. Who can stop? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? With everything that is within us. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Lift it up. Who can stop the Lord? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? The throne of praise to our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are worthy. 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 Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Shall we give a mighty hand to the Lord? Lift up all the praise. Let's give a mighty round of applause to the Lord. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. So before I came here, something that reminded me is about how God washed his disciples' feet. There was no intention. It was just an act of love. And Isaiah 6, 8 says, then I heard the Lord say, Who shall I send? Who will be your messenger? I answered, I will go. Send me. So my brothers and sisters, are you that messenger? Are you going to take that answer today? Here I am. Send me. Send me where? To the broken. To the person you don't love. Or oh, to go and wash a filthy feet. Just take that step. Just believe it. Just claim it. I will go. Send me. I will go and do your will. So let's just keep that words in our hearts and in our minds right now. Just send me. Send me to do what God wants me to do. Send me. I am going to be his messenger. 
Let's lift up our hands and let's build a throne of praise to our God. If you have the freedom, let's start worshiping Him in tongues. Let's start worshiping Him with the Spirit because right now, how it says in Romans chapter 5, verse 5, the love of God is poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit this evening. And right now, there is a river. A river that runs from the heart of God and that river is right within you this evening. And already, because it's flowing, flowing out of our hearts, let's start worshipping the Lord. Let's start thanking the Lord. If you have the freedom, brothers and sisters, let's raise both our hands to our God, our King, our Saviour, and worship Him for this power, for this love that is flowing right now. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! experience a breakthrough this evening I'd like to invite you brothers and sisters let's forget about who's next to us let's make this time a time for the Lord and let's raise our hands and let's start worshiping the Lord and we are in the presence of our God and already because it's happening shall we just let's all just go to the upper room with the Lord yes we have fear yes we are defeated yes we are powerless but the Lord is in our midst and every one of us uh, we have the Lord standing before us. Uh, we may have brought a locked heart here, uh, locked out of fear, locked out of bondage, uh, locked out of sickness. Today, uh, the Lord is entering into every locked heart and He is here to breathe on us the Holy Spirit. And this evening, uh, the Lord is breathing on us the Holy Spirit. Lord, we invite you, let your peace reign over our hearts this evening. Let your presence flow, flood over us this evening. And right now, uh, the Lord is encountering every one of us. Uh, this evening, 
Uh, the Lord gives us a promise in Acts chapter 1 verse 8. You shall receive power from above and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. In the early church, a witness meant a person who was a martyr. In the early church, a witness meant it was a death sentence. But that was the very witness that the Lord brought through the lives of the disciples. So today, uh, brothers and sisters, no matter what difficult circumstances we may face, the Lord is going to give us the power from above. No matter what crisis we have walked in here, He is going to give us the power to become His witnesses. And already, because that is happening in our hearts, happening in our midst, shall we forget about who's next to us? And let's give a mighty round of applause to the Lord. And let's build a throne of praise. Let's welcome the Lord. We welcome you with our praise. We welcome you. Come Holy Spirit, fall afresh on us, Lord. Hallelujah. Breakthrough, Lord. Breakthrough, Lord. Breakthrough, Lord. Overflow, overflow with your fire, overflow with the wind, O God. Renew our hearts, renew our hearts today. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Let's sing it out. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Sing it out. We are in your presence. Invite the Lord. Fill us with your power. Fill us with your power. Lift you have the freedom. Forget about everyone else. Lift your hands to the heavens. Sing it out. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome.
intercession of our blessed mother for the rest of the meeting hail mary full of grace the lord is with thee blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb jesus holy mary mother of god pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death amen Praise the Lord. 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 Give your mighty hand to the Lord. Give him all the glory. We give you all the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you Jesus. Thank you Father. Please be seated brothers and sisters. and sisters to this evening's prayer meeting at St. Peter's College Hall. We also welcome those of you joining us live on YouTube and will join us in the days to come as well. So we have a couple of announcements. There will be praying over taking place today at the end of the meeting. So that will be in front of the hall as well as at the back of the hall. There will also be praying over taking place via Zoom as well. So those of you joining us on YouTube, the Zoom details are at the bottom of, uh, are, is in the description. The service meeting will be taking place tomorrow on Zoom, on the following Zoom ID, followed by a time of intercessory. So we invite all our servers to join us and to intercede for all our ministries during this time as well. The youth will be meeting this Saturday from 10.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. at Tabo. That's number 36 upon 1, Papiliana Road, Nadimala. Um, and this time they'll be learning to pray, the, pray with the five keys. So we invite all our youth to come and join us and be a part of this ministry. The September On Our Knees edition is out on our website. You can download it from www.prison.community.org. If you require um, support during this time or you have a prayer request or you want someone to talk to or you have a testimony to share, you can contact us on the following contact details. Also do share. Uh, follow us on YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram as well. We have a testimony to share. So this is a testimony from last week. During the worship at last week's prayer meeting, there was a word of knowledge that a person who's suffering from arthritis cannot move or bend your fingers and in a lot of pain is being healed. And to move your fingers, says the Lord. This person says that she claimed that healing and was able to bend and move the, her fingers immediately and was able to clap and praise God and experience complete healing. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We now invite Lalitata for today's message. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good evening, brothers and sisters. Yes, shall we lift our minds and hearts to the Lord, lift a throne of praise to the Lord that He may rule and reign in this place with His supernatural power and presence. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. 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 
Glory to you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. Bless you, Lord. Let's build it up and thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. Glory to you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to you, Lord. Worship you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Worship your name. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please be seated, brothers and sisters. So I found this uh, interesting saying. Uh, which I'd like to share with you before we start. Uh, it says, uh, uh, He who provides for this life, he who provides for this life, but takes no care for eternity, <clears throat> but takes no care for eternity, is wise for a moment, but a fool forever. <laughs> he who he who does, he who provides for this life, you know, how much we provide, isn't it? A pension, you know, a money in the bank uh, in case we get sick, isn't it? And uh, even some people buy their uh, coffins also, you know. And, uh, you know, so they have, uh, uh, today they have VIP service, you know. So, <laughs> but all prepared for this world. So it says, he who provides for this life, but takes no care for eternity, is wise for a moment, but a fool forever. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So tonight's uh, topic is, uh, uh, it's here on the screen. You can repeat after me. We love because he has loved us first. This is actually a verse from the scripture itself. And the scripture is, uh, jo uh, let me tell you, uh, it is uh, 1 John chapter 4, verse 19. This is from the scripture itself. 1 John chapter 4, verse 19. We love because he has loved us. So, actually from our small days, uh, we have been told and it has been drilled into us that Christianity is to love one another. I think you also would have been told, I have also been told, love one another. You know, when you are fighting with your siblings, you know, my, my mother used to pull my ear and say, you must love one another, you know. And then we were given a punishment. Uh, my sister was told to say the first part of the Hail Mary and I was told to do the second part. So she gritted her teeth and said, Hail Mary, full of death, because she's so angry. And, and I will respond by saying, Holy Mary, Mother of God. So we are angry, but we are saying our prayers. Because the commandment is clear. What's the commandment? Love one another. But I don't think we were ever told uh, how to do that. How do we love one another? Uh, we, were, we assumed that we have to find the goodwill, the strength, the character from within our own selves to love the other. And if someone asks why? Because Jesus expects you to love one another. So in marriage also, of course, everyone gets married expecting to love one another, isn't it? But deep in the secret places of our hearts, we are assuming that we will receive love from the other. 
But the problem is that the other one has also come with the same intention. <laughs> so each of us supposed to love the other is in need of love, is in need of validation, is in need of security. And what's the result? The result is most often that we can't love one another. We also tend to hate one another. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Actually, uh, uh, there was a series of films made by one of the famous actors, uh, Michael Douglas. Michael Douglas is a famous actor. Uh, in this series, in the first one, uh, the, the film was all about the romantic, powerful love between him and the other star, the lady, you know. The second one is about how the marriage when Sa, and the third one is how they really found creative ways of hating each other. <laughs> it's amazing if you see that, <laughs> you know, creative ways of really hating each other, you know. And if one did one thing, someone, the other one did something worse. <laughs> and, and it's an amazing reflection because uh, the commandment is so clear. What's the commandment? Love one another. And, but the problem is also there. There is a struggle within our hearts to love others. But there's a second problem. Actually, loving the whole world is very easy. How do you do that? You take a world map, you put it on the table, and then you light a candle, and then you love people in all the countries. Then you can love terrorists also <laughs> because uh, they, are in the, uh, they are in East Africa. <laughs> Some are in uh, the Middle East. <laughs> Others are uh, drug dealers in South America. We can love them. We can say, Father, forgive them. We can, we can really care for them. We can really offer a heart of really loving heart. And then someone in the family comes and disturbs a prayer. <laughs> they shake you up. Hey, what are you doing? Then we stop loving the world and we become very nasty to the people who are close by. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> so the real challenge, the real challenge, one is how do you find strength to love other people when we ourselves are broken? The second one is how do you love the people who are closest to you? Which is really the challenge. Because you see them day in and day out. You know them through and through. So there is, there is no, you know, you can't give them the benefit of the doubt. Because you know what they are doing. And neither can they give you the benefit of the doubt because they know what you are doing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's why new friends are always better than old ones because they don't know our, our background yet. So we can put on the makeup, uh, uh, have the good manners. Uh, yes, sir, no, sir, how wonderful. Yes, you know, and how we can have a great, great time uh, till you drop the ball. <laughs> the moment you drop the ball, the hidden nature comes out. But the command of the Lord is beautifully given. Love one another this is the command of the Lord. But tonight, we are going to reflect on how we could really do that. And here we have the answer. We can say it again. We love because He has loved us first. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's the good news of Christianity. So I'd just like to go back to uh, the base idea that we reflected last week. What is that? The question. What's the question? What is the one thing we can do to please God? What makes God happy? That's the question we asked last week. And if you have forgotten, we fold up the the shop and we go home. <laughs> Anyone tell me? Yes. The front lines are saving the back lines. Okay. <laughs> what's, the, what's the 
what's the one thing that really pleases God? What's it? Faith. I told you how you analyze the scripture, you look at the New Testament, and you begin to see that what makes God happy is faith. So we looked at the scripture. We are not going to look at everything, but we are going to look at Hebrews 11, 6. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. You can repeat after me. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. What about all the kneeling? What about all the praying? What about... What about all the sacrifices? What about all the good things? I think they all add on. They all add on. Like the sacraments, I've begun to realize. We have been reflecting very much on the sacraments, uh, on the sacrament of baptism uh, in the last few months, very much. And I've begun to quietly realize that the sacrament that makes all the other sacraments possible is baptism. And we have not considered it too seriously. Actually, I'm seriously considering going, uh, you know, trying to find uh, when they, in, the, when the, in the theological institute, they are lecturing on baptism to go and listen again because we listen to those lectures, but it has not registered. Now only I'm beginning to realize without baptism, uh, all the other sacraments don't operate. The Eucharist, you can't receive you, Jesus Christ. You know, you can't receive the confirmation. You can't go to confession. Baptism is like the foundation of our uh, Christian experience. So if baptism is the foundation of Christian experience, every other thing adds on. The Eucharist gets great value by bringing Jesus into our life. You know, confession gives us great opportunity to be free of the past and live into the future. But every one of them is based on that base sacrament called baptism. And in the same way, the scriptures is telling us all every other spiritual act is based on the foundation called faith. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And then he defines it. You can repeat after me. Because anyone who comes to him, you can repeat that must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. So two things he says, you must believe that he exists and if you seek him, he will give you a creative, beautiful answer. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So now, uh, our topic is love one another as I love you, that was the commandment. But our topic is love because he has loved you first. Now we are looking at the fun foundation. What's the foundation? The foundation is if you really want to please God, what do you have, need to have? You need to have faith. Now, having faith in God is a very general term, isn't it? Because there, are, there is the... There are other gods, you know, there are Hindu gods, there are, there are other, other gods. You can say, I have faith in, in God in a very general sense. But for us Christians, to have faith in God is to believe in his word. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Those who are writing it down, you can write down, you can pray with it. To have faith in God is to believe in his word. And his word is two-dimensional. One is the word in the scripture, but the other is Jesus Christ himself. Jesus Christ himself is the word of God. And Jesus gave it beautifully to us. John chapter 8, verse 31. John chapter 8, verse 31. To the Jews who had believed in him, believed him, you can repeat that. Actually, this is very significant because to the Jews who believe means these are people who already believed in the Old Testament, in the laws of Moses, in the, in the declarations of the prophets. To the Jews who believed him, 
the, and, and they came to him, he says to the Jews who believed him, Jesus said, you can repeat that, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. And uh, the Jerusalem Bible translation will say, if you make my word your home, you will be my disciple. And then the next verse completes it. If you look at the next verse, then you will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. My brother, my sister, we need to fully appreciate what has been said here. Do you know that um, we have something called a discernment voice inside us? When some politician says, this is the truth, inside our hearts we say, that's not the truth. You know? Who says that? We have an internal discernment voice. And... Uh, in the, you know, this voice is very strong, you know. Uh, during the war, unfortunately, we had a 30-year war, you know. Uh, uh, unfortunately, we began to find out there are voices that are even deeper than your conscious mind, you know. And uh, in the war, during the war, when the battles took place and people were dying, you know, there was grief and joy that was coming from deep inside us, depending whether you were a Sinhalese, or a Tamil. It's amazing. You know, the base of our understanding is from our subconscious. And most of the time, we agree with things that we think are good. We don't agree with things we don't think are good. And we can even do that to the Word of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Actually, in, uh, in India, in the Divine Retreat Center, uh, he's no longer there, but those days, uh, there was this advocate. He was an advocate by profession, uh, but uh, he was a preacher in the retreat center. So as he got older, he preached brilliantly, but as he got older, he also used to get annoyed with the people in the audience. You know, I think that's a problem people have. You know, you get older, you start getting annoyed. You know, and uh, one day after the lecture, uh, a person came up to him and said, you know, I don't agree with what Jesus says about divorce. So he said, so what can I do? That is what Jesus says. He says, but I don't agree. I don't think that's right. So he got there. He said, I think that's not right. He said, but what can I do? He was getting annoyed. He said, no, but, but here within this, Jesus, what he says about divorce, I don't. So then he asked, where in the Bible does he say that? So I'll show you. He said, he turned the Bible. He came to the, here it is, and gave it to him. He took the Bible in his hands, and what did he do? Tore the page out of the Bible, and threw it aside, and gave the Bible back, and said, now in your Bible, you don't have it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's what you mean by having subjective truth. <laughs> I'm thinking, this is good with this is okay with me, that's not okay with me. This is right with me, that's not right. Who is deciding all that? Myself. But Jesus warned him, if you are really my disciple, what will you do? You will make my word your home. You will live inside my word. Then you will start knowing the truth about everything. And that truth will set you free. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So some of the things we are believing are not really from the heart of God. It's from modern, modern understanding, which is very limited truth. You know, some of the things that we believe are absolutely right may, may, is not coming from the word of God. It's coming from popular understanding. And we are shifting our thinking to fit that. And then we are thinking, I'm not, I'm sad, I'm depressed, I'm frightened, I'm going through struggle. And if you go to see the foundation, something is wrong. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, how do you please God? Can you tell me? What's the greatest way of pleasing God? Faith. Great faith. And last week I said it, I'm not going back to those texts. But faith in what? Great faith in His Great love. Because that's really like the underlying theme of scripture. 
So you can have faith in a lot of stuff. But if you read the New Testament, in the New Testament, we are called to have faith in His love. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Unfortunately, when we were children, we were raised with the Old Testament attitude of fear, you know. And fear is God will punish you. You will get bad things will happen to you. So most of the people out of fear become obedient to the rules and laws. So the moment you get old enough to realize that those Gonibilla stories are not true, uh, what happens? You people go wild. <laughs> and really, really, that's what happens. They say, after they leave school, you can't see them again till they get married <laughs> because they have come to get the marriage certificate worked out. Then you see them again when they're putting children into the school. <laughs> uh, then you see them 10 years later. <laughs> So after about 50 or 60, uh, they are thinking better prepare a place there also, you know. <laughs> and then, <laughs> then of course, we become religious, you know. After 70, you say the rosary and say the prayers, just in case, you know, you die and you have to go there. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And you can see here, you please God by having faith, faith in His Word. What's His Word? His word is His love for us. John chapter 3, verse 16, the most foundational verse of God's love for us. And we look at it tonight in a special way. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Here also you have the word faith, belief is coming in. But the key text, the key understanding I'd like to share with you tonight is God's love for the world. Now, when you say world, uh, the singular Bible translates it much better than the English one. The, the singular Bible says, lokaya, you know, lokaya. Lokaya means people of the world. Those who are in small sin and those who are in mortal sin. Those who are willfully separated from God those who don't want anything to do with God. For everyone, the scripture says, God has great love. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My brother, my sister, this is the amazing truth. But then it means nothing to anyone till you do what? The, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes faith in this love. Actually, when we were growing up, uh, no one told us about God loving the lost and the broken. We were told that if you are good, God will be really good to you, you know. And if you, are, if you behave well, God will really bless you. And he will look after you and your needs will be met. We had so many stuff like that that we got into us that we missed the promise of the scripture. What's the promise of the scripture? The promise of the scripture is so clear. God's love for the whole world. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And uh, we leave uh, 316 here. And we go back to the verse that we reflected last week, which is uh, 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 Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 and 5. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 and 5. This amazing thing. But because of his great love for us, you can repeat that. God who is rich in mercy 
made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. Look at this text a little bit. What do you mean by dead in transgressions? That means too far gone. Too far gone. There is no answer for your problem. You are already gone. People who live, you can say people who have died, but we can also say those who live in mortal sin. God's great love for us is that he died for those who are also living in mortal sin, who are disobedient, who have made a great mistake, who have lost their way. His love is there for each one. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My brother, my sister, this is the fundamental good news. And if you believe it, things begin to happen. Great faith in his great love. So we'll go back to John 3.16 and we go to 3.17 now. And 3.17 takes it to another place if you look at it together. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Isn't that amazing? Jesus said it so many times, isn't it? He said the, the, in, 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 uh, in the encounter with Zacchaeus, uh, Luke chapter 19 verse 10, he says, the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. Then in Mark chapter 2, when they were, the Pharisees were saying, this man is associating with sinners, he said, the, it is the sick who need the doctor and not those who are righteous. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And I'm beginning to think, this message has not sunk in to our hearts. And because of that, over time, even in a serious spiritual journey, we come to discouragement. Why do we come to discouragement? Because we feel that we are unable to give response to God. We are unable to love Him. We are unable to love our neighbor. We are unable to love ourselves. We go through so many struggles in our hearts. Little by little, little by little, we become discouraged and we stop coming to God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, uh, there may be many reasons for dryness in prayer. There may be many reasons. But I think this is like the main reason why we can't pray. So last time I said, you know, uh, there was this priest who was explaining uh, the life of Padre Pio. And uh, they, he said, uh, you know, he prayed 50 rosaries a day. You know, 50 rosaries. I got a shock, you know. Did he have time to breathe, you know, when he pray 50 rosaries? Then he said, he whipped himself daily. He whipped himself daily. So somebody there in the group asked that priest, why did he do that? He said, because he considered himself a great sinner. I don't know about you, for me that was a great encouragement. <laughs> because if he considered himself a great sinner, that means that must be a part of the spiritual journey. You know? <laughs> My gosh, because we can't trust this love deep enough, we become discouraged. We think we have to change our nature. We have to become good. We have to grow in our holiness. And over years, when you are unable to do that, we become discouraged. Then we live on the surface. We say our prayers, but our hearts are untouched. Our doors are not open. Our inner being goes through struggles. We hate ourselves. You know, and then of course, when we hate ourselves, it's manifested in the anger we show other people. You know, we snap at this and we snap at that, you know. And we found out, you know, and then we become impossible to live with, holy to pray with, but impossible to live with. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can you see the, the struggle that we go through? Because I'm thinking, because we haven't reflected deeply enough on the love that God has for us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So can you see here, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Look at the next verse. See how many times he mentions faith. You can count it, you know. 
whoever believes in him you can repeat that is not condemned believe what believe in this love that he came he gave his life for me a broken sinner whoever believes in him let's say it again is not condemned but whoever does not believe stands condemned already that means we are separated from the love of god stands condemned already because you can repeat that he has not believed in the name of god's one and only son praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord so my brother my sister let's bring it back together again what pleases god the most tell me faith faith in what faith in his word and what's his word his love for us and if you start believing in his love we have a assurance we get something called eternal life now those days i thought eternal life is when you die you continue to live of course but even even people who are who are who are really bad also continue to live after they die you know so i met this exorcist you know he does exorcist ministry for many years a priest and uh, i was i was interested in in his experience uh, so i was talking to him i said father uh, in my experience you know we have been ministering for 40 years we have prayed for people who are possessed and who manifest you know and i said in my experience i have yet to meet a devil you know except the ones who are very close to us of course uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah yet to meet yet to meet a devil but i have met these dead spirits uh, you know people who have died who continue to live you know and uh, he told the teeth tells me yes it's the same with me he says he has been doing ministry for so many years he says all people who have died but in the wrong disposition they have died in the wrong disposition that means they have not lived well enough so what has happened is they are their soul or what their spirit is been used by these people to be sent to various people to do evil so so this living after death happens even to the worst so eternal life is not living after death what is that it is enjoying god's love inside your heart praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord god's energy god's strength god's power working inside my life isn't that amazing what pleases god faith faith in what faith in his word what's the word love and when you have faith in his love his love starts becoming energy inside of us praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord and that's what we reflected on last week uh, romans 5 5 romans chapter 5 verse 5 look at this beautiful text and hope does not disappoint us you can repeat that because you believe in this love first you have faith only you don't have experience you only have faith but when you have faith in this love that hope does not disappoint us why is that because you can live with that god has poured out his love into our hearts by the holy spirit whom he has given us Shall we praise and thank the Lord? Hallelujah! 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 Praise your Father! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Glory to your name! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! So, my brother, my sister, I want to restructure the whole argument once again. What's it? What pleases God? Great faith. Faith in what? In His Word. His Word concerning what? Love. so when you have faith in his love you have to have faith you don't have to have any sign if you have a sign if you have a feeling it's not faith it's a it's your you're accepting a an ex- experience you're expect you're accepting a feeling no you believe that revealed word and then he says 
you will have something called eternal life. And here it is said, what is eternal life is defined for us by St. Paul. Your hope will never be disappointed. Why is that? Because the love of God has been poured into your hearts by the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 So my brother, my sister, tonight I just want to tell you, when you start believing in his love and the Holy Spirit starts putting it into your heart, things begin to happen in our life. So, uh, John chapter 7, uh, I'm speaking this from memory, if I'm wrong, we'll make the adjustment. John 7 verse 30 uh, or 29, 30. John chapter 7 verse 30. Can we make it 30? 29? John chapter 7. Not there. 7 uh, 29, 27, sorry. <laughs> 37, yeah, 37. Sorry, getting older. Okay, so 37. Actually, the background to this verse is beautiful. Uh, he's in, he's in, uh, uh, he's in, uh, uh, Galilee, and his brothers ask him, uh, are, you, are you not going to Jerusalem for the feast? But they were going to kill him. So they, he didn't go. But he went quietly, he went silently. And when he went silently, he was watching what was happening. People were going to the temple, they were praying, they were coming back, but their needs were not being met. They were saying their prayers, they were offering sacrifices, but th things were not happening inside them. And then on the last day, he couldn't stand it anymore. He stood up and he shouted. On the last and greatest day of the feast, you can repeat that. Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Can you see that? He says, anyone is thirsty. Thirsty for what? The great Saint Teresa of Calcutta. Her theme was, I thirst. He took it from the words of Jesus on the, on the scripture, uh, on the cross. I thirst. If anyone is thirsty, he said, come to me. Thirsty for what? Thirsty for this love that people are hungering for. They went to the temple, they couldn't find it. They offered the sacrifice, they couldn't meet it. And Jesus said, if anyone is thirsty, come to me, he said. Look at, look at the name, verse 38. Whoever believes in me, again the word, what's the word? Key is faith. As the scripture has said, streams of water will flow from within him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Actually, here is the key tonight. When the stream of Jesus comes inside, it not only fills you, what does it do? It overflows from you. And that's why the theme tonight, what's the theme? The theme is, we love because he loved us first. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are you following what I'm saying? We love because he loved us first. Actually, our focus is not loving anybody. Our focus is not serving. Our focus is not being a disciple. Our focus, number one, come to me, he said. Come to me, he said. And when you come to me, a river will start flowing within your heart. And look at the next verse. John explains what the river is in verse 38. Uh, verse 39. By this he meant, you can repeat that, the spirit whom those who believed in him were later to receive. 
Can you see that? It was not yet given to them. They were late. That's why they ran away on the last day. That's why they were not faithful because they didn't have the river inside of them. You know, sometimes I often question, you know, Lord, why do you call me to do this? Because I don't have the character. I don't have the strength. I don't have the nature to do what you're expecting. And the Lord reminds me, I don't want your character. I don't want your nature. I don't want your intelligence. Then what do you want? I want you to believe in me that the river will flow through you into the world around you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Shall we give the Lord a mighty hand, my brother, my sister? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 And, and he's explaining it. John is explaining it. Up to that time, we're going to be that. The Spirit had not been given since Jesus had not yet been glorified. Now, again, I'm, I'm quantifying this whole thing. Uh, step number one, what is that? What pleases God? Great faith. Number two, faith in what? Faith in His Word. And His Word is Jesus, not just His Word, faith in His love. And when you have faith in His Word and love, what do you get? The Holy Spirit. And when the, when the Holy Spirit comes, He brings the love of God into our hearts. It's a river. And what is the nature of a river? It flows and then it overflows. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What's the theme tonight? We love because He has loved us first. So tonight I'm just inviting you, stop trying to struggle to follow Jesus. Stop trying to struggle to obey him because that's not how he meant it. Look at this. It said here, the disciples didn't, didn't have this experience yet. That's why at the, when the pressure was the highest, they left him. That's why he became alone because the river was not yet flowing through their hearts. It's his suffering. It's his death. It's his resurrection. It's Pentecost that brings this into our lives. Shall we just praise and thank the Lord? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Glory to your name. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And see what St. Paul writes. Romans 8, 38. Beautifully given to us. Romans 8, verse 38. For I am convinced, you can live with that, that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, you can, verse 39, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. St. Paul is either fully crazy. How can, when you are going to be killed, how can you not be separated from the love of God? You know, you know the statues of St. Paul, it's only now I understand the significance. If you notice a statue of St. Paul, every statue of St. Paul, he's holding an, a sword. If you, if you take and you go to the internet and ask for an Im image of St. Paul, he's holding a sword. And you know why he's holding a sword? Because the sword is the one that killed him. He was beheaded. But the sword could not separate him from the love of God. Why is that? Because the love of God was flowing through the Holy Spirit from inside him, outside. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Normally for us, love comes from outside here, inside. Somebody tells us, you are great. Wow, I'm loved. So the wife was looking at herself in the mirror and didn't like what she saw. 
and uh, she was complaining about all the things that had happened to her through her years of being married. And she turned to the husband and said, you know, give me a compliment, I'm really down, you know. And at least tell me one good thing about yourself. And he said, you have great eyesight. <laughs> So, so, uh, so, uh, so my brothers and sisters, normally love comes from outside, inside. And when the outside sources dry up, that's when we are depressed. That's when we are sad. That's when we walk in the desert. That's when we get into loneliness. That's when we fall into crisis. And that's natural and normal. But we are not normal, we are not natural, we are supernatural. Because the love of God has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And because of that, deeper the crisis, greater the depths we go into. And deeper the source of living water that will come forth into our lives. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Actually, Jesus gave us that instruction. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Jesus gave this beautiful instruction. This text is world famous. We need to allow it to become deeper and deeper in our hearts. Matthew 11, 28. If you look at 11, come to me. You can repeat that. All you who are weary and burdened. And I will give you rest. Are you misunderstood? Are you going through dryness? Are you going through rejection? Are people treating you badly? Are we going through abuse? Come to me, he says. And I will give you rest. Actually, if you look at the life of Jesus, towards the end of his life, he went through the greatest crisis of the whole universe the son of God going through the great rejection of the whole world he did something that was natural to any one of us what did he do he picked up his three best friends who were they James John and Peter and he clung to them actually that's what we do isn't it text them Talk to them, phone them, go to them, complain to them. Because what are friends for if you can't complain about what's happening to you? What happened? They fell asleep. They couldn't carry his burden. And do you know that in our spiritual journey, God will lead us through that same path. We can cling to people. We can hold on to support. But there is a moment when he will remove that. Now I'm suspecting it is the Lord himself who put them to sleep. <laughs> Why is that? Then he had no support at the human level. What did he do? He went further. That's what it means. If you don't have support, if you don't have an answer, go further. What do you mean go further? He went into the feet of his father and then he prayed he complained he said I don't want this that's what he said in plain terms he said take this away I don't want this but then he trusted his love and said what did he say not my will but yours praise the Lord praise the Lord look at the next verse here Matthew eleven twenty nine 29 gives it to us please. take my yoke upon you you can repeat that and learn from me. What is what's his yoke? What, what do we learn from him? He abandoned himself to the will of his father. That's the yoke. He didn't try to find his own solution. He surrendered to the will of his father. For I am gentle, you can repeat that, and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. Anyone who has surrendered to the will of God knows what this means. When you say, yes, I will accept it from your hands. 
the river starts flowing from inside praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord no i remember uh, before we were married you know uh, uh, there was opposition opposition to the to our relationship and we were asked to stop of course i was angry my wife was willing to but i was angry with her also for agreeing to that you know i said why should you allow anybody else to tell us what to do you know but anyway we were in that struggle and in my in my prayer time the lord asked me a very relevant question the question was uh, you are angry that they are interfering in your life i said of course you know why shouldn't they why you can't they mind their own business you know why do they want to interfere in our life but then i heard the voice say supposing it's my will that you let this go will you say yes then only i realized something had happened in my heart what had happened god had given me my wife as a gift uh, uh, you know and i fell in love with her but little by little the gift became bigger than god himself and god is jealous <laughs> why is he jealous not because he is jealous but he can't make use of people who are crippled what do you mean cripple i am attached to this and i am attached to that and i am attached to the other thing god says okay then live with your attachments and die with your attachments that's what happens to many of us you know and he challenged me from deep inside supposing i am the one i said i can't i'm too caught up here but not my will but yours if that's what you want i'm ready to say yes but i can't i don't know how i'll do it but here it is immediately what happens the river starts flowing because you have said yes to the love of god praise the lord praise the lord that's why he says my yoke is light it's beautiful look at the next verse he explains it verse 30 he gives it for my yoke is easy you can repeat that and my burden is light So we present thank the Lord hallelujah 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 in surrender this whole thing falls into place it happened to Jesus how did it happen not my will but yours the river flows matthew says he was comforted by an angel what is the comfort when the river of the spirit is flowing through a surrendered life you are comforted then he came back they were sleeping again then he joked he said come come are you still sleeping he was no longer disturbed are you still sleeping come join me let's go praise the lord praise the lord my brother my sister without this kind of inner journey we are just scratching the surface of our journey and most of the time we are living discontented life i mean inviting you tonight once again step by step number 1 how do you please god great faith faith in what faith in his word and what's his word his word is love when you believe in this great love that god has for us he doesn't leave us empty he fills us with the holy spirit the river starts flowing and when you hold on to that nothing can separate you from this love things are happening outside but the river is flowing inside and when that happens the burden is light look what happened to jesus he was glorified he became the risen lord the world was saved the disciples were baptized in the holy spirit and history itself was changed by the great love of god shall we give the lord a mighty hand thank you father hallelujah 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 so i want to finish with st francis tonight my brother my sister we may not have great enemies you know we may not have great enemies you know but we may have people close to us who are very difficult to love and that's a challenge st francis lived in a time uh, it was the 11th to the 12th century uh, 
800 years ago <coughs> when there were several movements in the church and it's important for us to understand you know i'll explain it through the charismatic renewal actually today uh, we are living in a time when the charismatic experience is in many places isn't it for example the pubudua is there in sri lanka we are there then the divine retreat center we are all having the charismatic experience the baptism of the holy spirit but different trends are taking place because the church needs it in the time of saint francis there was a great need in the church the need was that the church had become corrupt in its core uh, worldliness uh, riches uh legalism was making the church bound the reaction to this was lay movements that went back to the gospel so francis was not the only person who did that it's a it's interesting to find out there were many other lay movements they said you know the church is corrupt there are enough issues we want the pure gospel and what did they do they went to live the pure gospel but the problem was when they went to pay, live the pure gospel they began to see the corruption inside the church and when they saw the corruption inside the church they attacked it and the church of course very lovingly attacked them back and <laughs> and and the result was conflicts in these conflicts it became very bitter and harsh many were excommunicated many many issues took place in that time and saint francis movement was unique he was he was never a priest he was a layman he was uh, one of the few laymen who have been uh, you know god has used in the mighty way in that in that way and there were other movements there was this uh, movement in the church uh, called the qatari movement i'm not sure whether i'm using the word properly and it's an italian movement qatari was was a movement of lay people that wanted the purity of the faith restored and uh, they argued with francis and his followers and they said you know uh, look at that priest they showed one priest you know what he's doing his moral life is terrible his behavior is terrible the wealth he has collected is so great and yet you don't say anything against him and uh, they say that francis answered that question by going to that priest and kissing his hands and saying through these hands jesus christ is brought to the altar what he did was his capacity to go beyond the weakness of the other and pick the heart of that what god is doing ensured that the franciscan movement didn't experience what all the other movements experienced why is that because he learned to love those in weakness praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord are you following what i'm saying the pope even gave permission to many of these movements to preach what happened to francis happened to many of these movements but most of them were finished because they took opposition and didn't know how to love people in weakness my brother my sister in our own lives i don't think i have met anybody and i won't meet anybody who doesn't have people who are weak in their immediate circle isn't it we all have them and we are challenged love them because god has loved you first that's what happened to francis he was able to love because god had loved him first and when we start doing that you know what will happen even the hardest heart will be touched praise the lord 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My brother, my sister, some of you, I know what you may be thinking. You don't know our family. <laughs> you don't know our situation, you know. If you know that one, you will really know. You don't know those people. I don't know, but God knows. And we learn from Francis beautifully. What did he learn? His experience of God's love was so deep, so rich, that he had the capacity to see beyond the brokenness of that person and bring out the beautiful nature inside. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Shall we stand and be in his presence tonight? So my brother, my sister, don't try to take the burden of loving others. You know, take it off. You don't have to. What do you do? Believe in this great love for you and the Holy Spirit will be poured into your hearts and Jesus said, those who believe in me, out of their bellies will flow rivers of living water. It will overflow from you. And when that overflows, those who are not yet experiencing that living water will be touched by the Lord. And a great miracle will take place. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Not their rejection, not their judgment, not their, not their wickedness, not their, not their scheming. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Shall we build a throne of praise? Hallelujah. 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 Worship you, Father. A bit. Let's build it up. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for that great love. Thank you for that great power. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Father. Blessing to you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glorify your name. We'll sing that beautiful hymn. I want to sing until I am lost in your love. Isn't that beautiful? You know. We'll sing it in English and sing it. Uh, we have Johan here uh, who has been part of singing the original. I will uh, we'll sing in English and we'll sing in singular the beautiful words. I want to sing until I am lost in your love. Isn't that beautiful? Communicating with God. Look at Jesus. When he found that he couldn't rely on his friends, what did he do? He went deeper. He went to the feet of the Father. And when he surrendered to the, his way of doing things, the river began to flow through him. And suddenly, the river not only flowed in his heart, it overflowed into the lives of others. Are you sad? Are you broken? Are you caught up? Do you have strength? It's okay. You don't have to struggle to find it. You don't have to put your life together. All you have to do is, you say, Jesus said these words, Come to me, all you who are burdened and heavy laden. Come to me, and I will give you that rest. I will give you that rest. I want to sing until I'm lost in your love. Till I'm found in your presence. You know, one day I will talk about it in the future. You know, uh, most of the time uh, in our prayer life, uh, we pray from hell. You know what, you, what do you mean by praying from hell? We are seated in our misery. We are seated in our problem. And we are praying to God who is hidden in the clouds. But do you know that Jesus became a human being? He died on the cross so that his blood can free us from our hell. That he took our problem, he took our weakness, he took our challenge, he fought it, he won the victory. So we wash ourselves in his blood and then we surrender to him and we can go and sit with him at the right hand of the Father. We can sit there and pray. We can sit there and enjoy His presence. Till I am found in your presence, worshipping before your throne. And you know, the atmosphere of His presence is absolute peace. That's the atmosphere of heaven. Like oxygen is the atmosphere of the earth. The atmosphere of heaven is, ab is absolute peace. Is, the, is being accepted and loved by a loving God. Deep held in his loving arms moved by your spirit entering into your flow 
the flow out of the river out of your belly will flow rivers of living water how precious this moment lord i want you to know let's make it our prayer tonight that god will take us out of the trench out of the misery out of the hell that we normally find ourselves in washed in his blood forgiven held in his arms taken into the presence of the father in the jesus the holy spirit the blessed mother the choirs of angels the saints in heaven all the angels all our friends our relations all together worshiping before the throne and we join them every trouble he's taking care of every need he's dealing with every problem he's handling and because of that i don't have to handle any of that and he's taken it all into his heart and we worship before his throne and we breathe in the atmosphere of heaven we breathe in his presence and we enjoy the glowing overflowing presence of the anointing of the holy spirit shall we just worship the lord with our whole mind and our whole heart hallelujah hallelujah worship your lord hallelujah thank you lord hallelujah praise him father thank you lord sabai 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 sabatan more lord more we pray for the release we pray for the release more lord more of your hallelujah and the lord
Yes, my brother, my sister, just open yourself to this love. One of the great temptations that we have is to believe that we are not worthy enough to be loved. Another temptation is to believe that my addiction, my brokenness, my sinfulness prevents me being loved. But tonight I want to tell you what happened to Zacchaeus, Jesus simply spoke his name. Zacchaeus, he said, I want to come into your home. And tonight, that's what the Lord is telling you tonight. I want to enter your life. If you're holding on to an addiction, because that addiction gives you an escape from the pain of life, He's telling you tonight, no, I am the answer to the pain that is inside you. Believe in this love I have for you. If you think that a mortal sin, that you have fallen into a wrong relationship, is really the answer to the loneliness of your life, the Lord is saying, no, let me love you. Let me show you that pure love is much greater than tainted lust. Let me reveal this love to you. So we can come to Him as we are. That's the beauty. Are we broken? Are we sad? Are we addicted? Are we caught up in a sinfulness? Come as you are is the word. My love is so powerful. And then we begin to experience it. St. Augustine's cry comes out. Too late have I known thee. Too late, O God. I have never known love until I have been loved by thee. True love. True love. Beyond sadness. Beyond, beyond emptiness. Beyond addiction. True love. Lord, we pray. Let there be a breakthrough in the thinking patterns of each and every brother and sister who are gathering here tonight. And over the internet, we pray. Let the lies that have enshrouded us a lifetime be us and sadness of our life, not the thousand activities we want to do outside to we'll try and fill that space inside us. It is this hard. We we'll sing this in singular now. As we sing it, oh hard. We we'll sing this in singular now. As we sing it, Oba mai, Oba mai, Magi hada dinui. It is you who won my heart. Oba dhati ma randava. You hold me in your loving hands. Sana sala daru ekulesini. You console me as a child. Have you come here in pain? Have you come here without an answer to the grief in your heart? I love him to take it away from your heart. Just last week, someone was talking to me. She lost her child when she, the child was six months old. And there was great grief in that person's life. And this person had come to a meeting like this. And in this meeting, God had given a word. And the word, she, under, she received the revelation. The revelation said, I saw you before you were born. And immediately she realized it was a part of a bigger plan of God. And she says, I don't know what happened. My grief, my sadness lifted. Because the love of God came inside. That's why St. Paul said in Romans 8, What can separate us from the love of God? Can death, can life, can rejection, can pain? Because the source of living water is flowing through our lives. We we'll sing it in singular as we open our hearts to His love. We'll sing from the first words. Over my Sala da 
fears and doubts break through our understanding Lord into your presence we were not seeking you Lord but you were seeking each one of us you were waiting at the door Lord to speak to our hearts each and every one Lord we sense your presence as we worship you tonight. More, Lord, more of your presence. More, Lord, more of your love revealed in our depths, Lord, as we worship you. Right now, if you have the gift of tongues, we sing into the spirit. Worship the Lord, let the Holy Spirit lead that worship. we pray for the release of the minds that have been captured by the ideology of this world where performance self-effort our own goodness struggling striving 
to win your love lord we have tried and we have failed and all our disappointment all our pain stems from this place we pray tonight for a shift and a renewal of our minds you have loved us first you have loved us in our sinfulness a great love for great sinners we just poured out your spirit into our hearts let it flow lord let your spirit flow in our hearts let it overflow lord into the lives around us when we are sad lord we will cling to your presence as we wait when we are broken when we feel so lost lord we will simply cling to you we will wait at your feet your river of water flowing through our lives will fill every place right now it will be stronger than our sadness greater than our brokenness deeper than our sinfulness more than our nature lord you're doing a miracle a mighty miracle in every one of us lord we declare tonight your love is greater than our sinfulness your love is greater than our brokenness your love is greater than our powerlessness it's not just greater it will fill and overflow into the lives around us because of that great love flowing in through each and every one of us we just want to say thank you lord hallelujah hallelujah praise you father we are tonight hallelujah hallelujah we are tonight oh is showing me someone is having a problem in the knee this person is having a uh, knee movements are restricted and this person is experiencing difficulty and the lord is saying i'm touching you right now and if you know that it is you uh, just shift your knee shift your leg and see whether there's a shift and a change because it's the power of his love flowing right through and if you know that there is a shift and a change you can just lift your hand and claim that word from the lord it is we have two three people claiming that word let's pray for them right now lord we pray that their breakthrough will become a living experience as they take that step in faith lord you're releasing your presence your power your love thank you jesus praise you father the lord is showing someone who is struggling with the broken nature a temper and this person remonstrates with himself or herself why am i like this why am i hurting the very ones that i love so much and i'm unable to control it and i'm and our whole family is going through this struggle but the lord is telling you let my love fill your heart just keep returning to me rest in me not hide from me because when you are hiding from me it's getting worse but if you remain with me trust in my love just keep returning to me my love will be stronger than your childhood brokenness and i will set you free and make you a blessing says the lord thank you lord praise you father glory to your name hallelujah lord is showing me a person who has some issues with some document and this person is finding difficult to complete and this is relevant to her life very important lord says you are mine trust me sit with me i will teach you how to complete that says the lord thank you lord hallelujah, hallelujah. praise hallelujah. you hallelujah bless you hallelujah glory to your name lord is showing me a person 
who has a problem with the toe which is blood circulation is not functioning properly and this person is scared that the the toe will be amputated lord says i have touched you and heal you trust me says the lord thank you lord thank praise you father jesus. hallelujah lord, glory jesus. to your name worship the, the lord is showing a person who has lost some jewelry and going through sadness and emptiness the lord says my child today i am feeling your emptiness with my love and my love is greater than the loss that you have you are going through so my love will set you free and i am more than enough for you says the thank lord thank you lord praise your father hallelujah glory the to lord you. is showing a person who is having a pain in the left shoulder pain and stiffness like a frozen shoulder and unable to raise that hand but the lord says just raise your hand and keep praising me says the thank lord thank you lord hallelujah praise your father glory to your name the lord is speaking to someone who spends the whole night seated on a armchair because this person is having breathing problems the lord is speaking to this person says today i am going to heal you from all these difficulties and from all your fears and from today onwards you are going to have a good night's rest praise you praise father lord. hallelujah praise glory, lord. glory to your name hallelujah. worship you, your father thank you lord the lord is also speaking to a young person who is very conscious about this person's height and that and this drawback has uh, has uh, sort of um, sent this person he this person can't uh, study he, this person can't think of a future plans the lord says I have seen your body your form even before you were born and I have great mission for you and I will take to a greater height be not be anxious about your height the lord thank says thank you lord praise you father praise glory to your name praise, praise you father the lord is speaking to a person who used to have this habit of watching uh, horror movies and every time something goes wrong in this person's life now this person feels as if there are effects of that the lord is saying my child i'm setting you free my light is shining upon you and my face is shining upon you now thank you lord praise and him. you are set free say lord thank you lord hallelujah praise you father glory the to the lord him. is also speaking to a person who is suffering a throat infection the lord is saying there isn't anything serious like you think Look, my child you are healed and financial crisis this person doesn't even have enough money to buy provisions for the house and is very distressed about this but the lord says my dear child i see your struggles and i've heard your cry just put your trust in me for i am jehovah jireh and i will glory to your name hallelujah hallelujah the lord is speaking to a person who has been suffering with a sin who was struggling with a sin for a long time and during the worship you experience the powerful presence and love of the lord and the lord says i have freed you you are mine i'm giving you the grace to take this to confession says the lord thank, thank you, you lord Jesus. hallelujah hallelujah praise you father hallelujah. glory to your name the lord is speaking to a person who is either praying or who's having a kidney uh, issue and you are worried because your legs are swollen and the lord is saying today tonight i'm healing you says the lord thank you thank jesus thank you lord praise hallelujah you. praise you father Amen. glory to your name shall we all stand and be in his presence tonight my brother my sister yeah praise you father thank you lord hallelujah 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 glory to your name praise the father worship the lord hallelujah 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 glory to your name hallelujah hallelujah just to remind you that after the meeting there will be small groups that will pray for healing and not only for healing but also to give you a word from the lord they will be praying with you and seeking the lord's word for you and you can go to these groups and they will share a word from the lord for you as well so as we join in the final hymn Your name is the heart 
Sing it out. Holy, you are lifted high. Holy, holy forever. Hear your people sing. Holy, sing it out. Hear your people sing. Holy to the King of Kings. Bless you, brothers and sisters. Praise the Lord.